So the internet found out about five people dying in a submarine, including a 19 year old kid. And within like 30 minutes, Damn, we got that Titanic experience and we didn't even have to pay 250 grand or die. Fuck it. The submarine mod is sick. Oh my god. I think there's a shipwreck over here. Oh no. That, that last one was kind of funny. Obviously, the internet is the internet, but the public or a lot of the public actually doesn't have a lot of empathy for these people. And the more you research this, the more you start to realize why. On the surface, four men pay the company OceanGate to go on a tourism trip down to see the Titanic ruins. Cool. And the CEO of the company is the pilot. But then you find out that said submarine is controlled by a PlayStation controller. We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> but the more you search into the company, you find that there's a lot of really shady stuff, especially with safety with them. For example, it seems like they go out of their way not to get certified by any regulatory body. At some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. Yeah. Dozens of people within the industry voice their concerns with the safety and OceanGate responds with, certification slows down innovation. And in 2018, OceanGate's own director of marine operations, David Lockridge, gets fired for allegedly voicing safety concerns, pointing out that he sees flaws within the hole or that there's things flammable that where there shouldn't be. And when he tries to go up and say, we need to get certification, gets fired. And the fact that the submarine was not certified was in the contract that all four of the passengers signed, so they knew. An experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. All of those are valid concerns, but this wasn't the submarine's first trip going down to the Titanic. This was the third time with passengers and it had already done 50 test trips. So yeah, it was not built the best, but it also wasn't a total gamble. The reason people lack empathy has nothing to do with any of those reasons. It has to do with the fact that the ticket price for this trip was $250,000 per person. Meaning these people aren't rich, they're rich. Hamish Harding, 58 years old and the owner of Action Aviation. Essentially, this dude buys and sells airplanes. And yes, he's exceptionally rich. He's taken trips to space that have costed probably upwards of $28 million a ticket. He's taken trips down to the bottom of the ocean for $750,000 a ticket. He's taken trips to the South Pole, which I don't know how much that costs, but it's probably not 20 bucks. In short, he's probably a billionaire. Paul Henry Najolet, 77 years old and a Titanic expert. From what I could find, he's a pretty normal dude. Obviously he wasn't poor, but he was kind of normal. He was a director at Michigan State University. He uh, was commissioned by companies and documentaries to do stuff on the Titanic. He just really loved the Titanic. Shahaz de Daoud. His son Suleiman was also on the submarine, but we're not talking about kids. He was 19. That is absolutely tragic that he passed away. We're not speaking about him. Shahazda was 48 and comes from a multi-generational family of wealth. The more you research the family, you do find that this is the prime example of just generational wealth profiting off of capitalism and extortion. Oil exploration, textiles, cotton, just general industrialization, you name it. A lot of the people online who are saying, oh, I don't care about them, are also saying the phrase, eat the rich. And in order to understand this, here's a TikTok from a really good TikToker, Jordan Simone. I don't know what a lot of people thought when they said eat the rich. Like, I don't know if it was a cute saying for them or something. But for many people, eat the rich means do just that. Hoarding wealth is so harmful, so unethical, so rage inducing that the only way to fix the problem is to get rid of the rich, to eat them. They must perish. Okay, this gets me fired up, so stay with me. Eat the rich, the full phrase is, when the poor shall have nothing more to eat, they shall eat the rich. It was a quote from Jean-Jacques Rousseau during the French Revolution where that literally happened. People were so poor, so mistreated that they had no other option than to just like, fuck it, we're just gonna start killing the rich. We're gonna start causing havoc. Just look into it, it's crazy. The important thing to remember is that Rousseau was not saying a should statement. He was saying a fact. It wasn't that you should kill the rich, but it was the fact that they do kill the rich. When people are mistreated that much, they have no other option. What he was not saying is to lose empathy for other people. In fact, he would probably argue heavily against that. He's not saying, oh, Hamish Harding is a billionaire. 
don't care if he dies. There are like 2,000 billionaires in the world, and if you killed every single one, guess how many billionaires there would be in the world? Still 2,000. Do you think since Hamish Harding is dead, the action aviation planes, all that money is gone? No, it just gets transferred to different people, nothing changes. We all extort, it's on a gradient, that's the point. Whether you have a billion dollar makeup company, or you have a thousand dollar makeup company, guess where your packaging is probably coming from? You probably chose to go with China because it's the cheapest, but guess what? You chose China because they're not getting paid a livable wage or a good wage because, well, you don't care. It's cheaper for you so you can stay competitive. So congratulations, you don't have a billion dollar makeup company, so you only extorted three children instead of a million. Do you want a fucking gold star? Do you see my point? It's don't hate the player, hate the game. I don't hate Bill Gates for being rich. I hate the fact that he can be rich, but he just played the game that we are all continually playing. And finally, for all of you saying, well, Bezos and, and Bill Gates and Rihanna, and J they made the game, they made the rules of the game, they can change it. No, they can't. This game that we're playing is not a new game. It's not a game set by current rules. It's a game that's played all over the world and really has always been played. Even in the Titanic's time, 100 years ago, guess how much it cost to go on a first class in the Titanic? $133,000 in today's money. It's pretty much the same as the fucking submarine to go see the Titanic. So like this wealth disparity, yes, it's changing and, and going in weird ways, but this is not new. This shit fires me up. If the French Revolution teaches us anything about this whole thing is that killing people and people dying and not having empathy for other people actually fixes nothing, absolutely nothing. When the French Revolution happened and they killed all those rich people, guess what? The rich people were still rich. The poor say poor. I know my thesis kind of sounds like we're fucked either way, deal with it, but what I'm really saying is that these five people who died, which by the way, only two of them are really the rich that we're talking about, you can both say, ugh, screw the rich, but I have love and empathy for fellow humans, fellow humanity. If you have the opportunity to take money from those corporations, do it. Do it in any, sue anything possible to get yourself ahead, do it. Play their games, but you can also have respect and love for fellow humans. It's sad that five people died. That is weird how that's a controversial statement. <laughs> so we got like 30 seconds until I get like the eight minute mark, which is like the YouTube monetization, whatever. Um, what are you wearing? What you up to? Um. One of these days, and it won't be long. You're gonna look for me, and I'll be gone. Oh, hi there.